Okay, good afternoon. My name is Loretta Bravo, and I'm part of the psychology department at Sanovis. And now we're going to talk about family constellations. And that's a work that we do here at Sanoviv. That's a type of um, uh, the psychologists. We do the, the therapy here, and also some of us include constellations. So we're going to be talking uh, today about family constellations. OK. So. Um, So we know that our well-being is tied to the well-being of our family system, which includes the living, the death, and the generations that preceded us. And it's about honoring the ancestors. So honoring uh, means a lot in the constellations work. Honoring our ancestors is honoring, honoring our parents, grandparents, and the, the ones that came before. So it's very important to be at peace with our parents. Some of us is, uh, for some of us, or in my experience uh, here in the work of constellations, it's sometimes difficult to heal that relationship. So it's very important in the work of constellation to heal that because um, it means a lot, the family legacy, uh, whether or not we recognize it. So that legacy follows us and, and we need to understand it and to heal it. So it, it, it even if we are not at peace with our parents, sometimes that shows us in next, gener next generations. So that's uh, one of the works that we do, honoring. So here we have a, a picture of a family that says that if you want love to flourish, you need to do what it's needed to refrain from doing what, harm, what harms it. So low love follows the order. And um, so we see here many generations, babies, parents, siblings, grandparents. And sometimes it happens that in the, uh, in the work of constellations, we see sometimes that there are some secrets, we can say, or there are some wounds also, some uh, tra traumatic or unresolved issues. And some of them have been hidden. Sometimes it's uh, people that have been in war or could be an abortion or a miscarriage. So those things are important in the system. Our system is our family. So we need sometimes in the, cl in the case of an abortion or a miscarriage, it's very important to give a place to that so sometimes, uh, most of the time, the abortions have been uh, uh, a secret and sometimes a secret that uh, we have kept for a long time. So those secrets affect our health some, even sometimes and affects our energy and, the, and sometimes the energy of, of uh, other children that we, that we decided to have. So it's, it's very important in the, in the work that I have done here. It's, uh, I've seen that it's very important to give a place to that soul. So when we give it a place to that soul, we're more at peace with ourselves. That, that soul also can have a, a place in our system because it's part of it. And the next, maybe the next uh, children that we do have, also they have their place because it is said that when we don't know, sometimes the next sibling can take the energy of the one that wasn't able to make it. So these are topics that are uh, important to, to, uh, to talk in the, in the constellations. I don't know if you have any questions so far here. Well, we can, um, let me go to the next chart. Sometimes the constellation work says approach um, some woundings, wounds that we have, so in the larger context, right?
So in the larger context of the family soul to which are blindly loyal. So sometimes what we mean by being blindly loyal, we in the constellation we talk about loyalties. So what, what is a loyalty? It's different being loyal than honor our system. When we are loyal, it's, it's in a way following the energy of the system but we follow that energy unconsciously, blindly, in a way of saying. So we, we, we follow the energy of the system unconsciously, and sometimes that happens also with the, with the health issues that we deal with. So sometimes we see in the family that there's like, could be like cancer and like past generations, and it continues in, in, um, in the next generations. So sometimes that could be a loyalty in our system and that happens because we are part we want to be part of the good consciousness of our system so that means being part of the good consciousness no when we uh, follow in a way a pattern and maybe it's we 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 can say how come this could be we can be in the good consciousness but this is how our system works and that's why we say this, uh, we did it in the good consciousness or for the good consciousness of the system that, that, we, that we have. Okay, so now we're going to see how this uh, constellation family process work. So the thing here, uh, we can work in different ways. Uh, usually when we go to a constellation, there's uh, several people, and uh, we all we participate. There's someone directing the constellation, the constellator. Sometimes it's like a, a psychotherapist. Sometimes it's a therapist that it's a training constellation and family constellations. So when we're there, uh, we can deal with something specific, like a divorce could be, or uh, maybe a health issue that we're dealing with, or any any topic we can we can address to and the thing here is uh, that we choose people and and that people work for the energy of our system at that at that point in that moment we uh, they are part of our family and it they come uh, become part of the morphogenetic field and in a way they can feel what is happening in our family without knowing anything about it. So that's what uh, happens when we do the work of constellations. But when we were here, we do it in a different way. We do it with uh, wooden dolls. And that's another way of working with the, with the constellation. So the, the patient can see his or her whole system there. And they can see the family members and we can see sometimes like the events that, uh, that have been there in our families and that have a, like a consequence or an influence in the later generations. So um, here the work has been very helpful. Uh, it has helped many patients to see what is the health issue uh, representing in their lives at this moment? And sometimes when we're dealing with that, we can uh, also, in a way, it is, it is very helpful to say yes. Let's say that we're dealing with cancer and to say yes to that, to that health issue that we're dealing with. And that's like, in a way, honoring our destiny. And that doesn't mean that we are saying, I'm gonna, I want to die. But in a way, I can see when I do the work of constellation, what is beyond that. And also the cancer can be represented in the, in the constellation. And we can see there what is the role of the cancer or any other health issue doing in our lives. And we're able to see in a way what is beyond that. And there are different workshops that we can work and, uh, 
and uh, we can see different things and we can maybe work with some some health issue but different times we can see different things right but sometimes I don't know it could be also depression or feelings of isolation that we're dealing with physical or mental illnesses too some conflicts or dysfunctions okay so in a way sometimes we uh, become entangled and uh, and that's part of of what happens and what we need here is uh, also to see that sometimes there's someone ignored in the system or forgotten or rejected or exiled or sometimes we can say that um, that's, there's someone that hasn't played their right role in the family like um, sometimes could be a child becoming a parent that happens sometimes with alcoholic parents child sometimes become parents so the roles are inverted so that that also affects the system so those are things that we can see there some roles that we have been playing and that are not for us to play it that way so that also can block the energy of love in the that has to flow through generations so this is some of uh, of the work of of constellation and, and it's based on the idea that some that uh, in a sense we go back in time and clear the blockages so that love can flow freely again but uh, it's a process that we need to be open to and uh, and yes that that's the, the main part no we need to open our heart in a way to see what we haven't been able to look at it yet so we can see with different eyes with more compassionate eyes we can say no sometimes another thing that is uh, very important here is sometimes that we judge we judge our parents we judge what they did, what they gave us or didn't give us. So that's also important not to judge because that interferes with the honoring. So when we judge, we're not able to be compassionate and we're not able to, to be in contact with from heart to heart. So that's another, uh, that's a, a main relationship that we need to heal, the one with our parents. And we can say maybe sometimes, but there's people that uh, have been adopted, let's say, and they don't know, they, they haven't, uh, uh, they never know, knew their parents. But it's, it doesn't matter. The parents are the ones that are in ourselves, half and half, our father and our mother. And uh, even if we didn't know them, they played our whole lives an important role. And they, got, they gave us our greatest gift, that is life. So just because of that, we need to honor them. And sometimes we judge and we can say that uh, they abandoned us or they did this or they do that. No, but we don't know what is behind that. And, and that's why we need to work with that to see things in a more compassionate way so we can heal those uh, relationships because it's going to influence also the relationship that we have with the mother is going to influence or it has is going to have an effect in the in the relationship that we have with our partners too. So it's very very important to heal that. So this is the way uh, it works. It's not a role playing or acting like like psychodrama could be, no. But uh, it's it's different than that. It's a session uh, that sometimes yeah different uh, constellators. Uh, they start in a in a different way, so they can start with a med meditation or an intention. But the idea is to create a confidential cycle, circle, or when we're working on one to one, to feel confident too on that work. So the person can bring um, some issue or problem, providing some details of the family on the family background, could be trauma, premature death, or in other events. And the facilitator uh, suggests which members of the person's family belong in the constellation 
and then sometimes we allow others to be added later. So the person that is constellating can place their representatives or family members, including himself or herself, within the circle. And it's the same way do it when we do it with the, with, the, with the wooden dolls, no? So in a way, we have a living map there, and, and the person, the client, can see, can see the, the picture there and can see how the movement begins. So the constellation activates the energy of the ancestral family in you, and this is because the energy has never left your field. So it's always there, and, um, and this is energy that has not been destroyed, and, and an, energy, an energy can be, that can be transformed. So it's very important for us to transform that, and the, the ones that represent parents and siblings and the family, they begin to mirror that, right? So the information begins to come to the people that represent our family system in the way they move their bodies and express themselves. So sometimes they have feelings or there are some images that emerge and, and in a way they, they are embodying the experience. So this is the, the representative perception, a way of saying, no? And, um, and it's like our body knows, and the people that has been uh, there in the in the work of constellations, it's they start feeling things that they never imagined. No, so if I'm representing, let's say, the mother, I can feel uh, like a distance, emotional distance between me and my daughter, or between me and my husband. So without knowing anything, we can we can feel or or have thoughts that those people had in a way of saying. So that's the work, the work of, of the constellation. So in a way, sometimes people say, like, I became a, a totally person, a, to a totally different person that had nothing to do with me. And it, in a way, it is that way. I have uh, experienced that too. And, uh, and it's because we are there at the service of that family system. But as when we finish, it's like we get just, it's the energy that has been there at that time, but uh, when it's finished, it's over, and, and we don't deal, we don't have any feelings there anymore. So the facilitator also can help this process, it helps the process, and guides the constellation, and sometimes in a way interprets the movements of the representatives, and sometimes asks what they feel or if they have something to say. And sometimes there are simple gestures that are meaningful, and, and the facilitator is the one that is going to, uh, to see what is, with his intuition, what is best to do or what movements to do in that moment. And sometimes also when we're representing there, sometimes uh, let's say that I'm the patient and someone is representing me, and there's a point when the, where the constellator sometimes can put you in, in your place, and, and you can start uh, also to be part of that. No? You're being part of that, but sometimes it's like an outsider. And in a point, there's the constellator that they put you there. And, um, and you start to, to be part, of, to feel what your whole system in a way is feeling. And you can sometimes uh, also know like the different energies of your whole system. And you can observe also what is un unfolding in a way of saying, okay. So this is a, a really interesting work, sometimes difficult to explain, difficult to understand. But I think uh, in my experience here at Sanovi with patients, it's been um, really a healing process for, for, all of, for some of us, you know, for some of the people that have tried. Any questions so far? Okay, so here we have uh, 
what says about personal consciousness and, and sometimes that we feel guilt or innocence, right? So these are things that we always, in a way, feel both guilt and innocence. So innocence with respect to one need and guilt with respect to another. So the dream of innocence without guilt is an illusion, says Bert Hellinger, no? So uh, sometimes it's a need to belong, and that is the need for bonding. The need also to maintain a balance of giving and taking, and that's for equilibrium. And the need for the safety, social convention, and predictability, and that is for orders. So there are different needs that um, we have, no? And uh, that, the second one, the need for, to belong, it's, well, we, we can, for bonding, we can see that, no? Sometimes we haven't had our mother the way we want, and there we're looking, always looking for that bonding, in a way of saying, in different relationships, sometimes we didn't have her, and we can, con we were, we're looking in another relationships, like let's say for a, a husband, and we're looking for that relationship in a way, with a, in an unconscious way. And when it talks also about here, the need to maintain a balance of giving and taking, and that's for equilibrium. So that um, they talk about this need of giving and taking that is very important, no? Um, we always give in relationships, we give and take, but there's only one relationship, and, and, and all of them, they need to be equal giving and receiving, giving and taking. But um, that's not the same when we talk about uh, a mother or parents and children. In that relationship, we won't, we, won't be able, uh, we won't be able to give back what they give us, what they gave us, no? That, that's the only one that won't be that way, because even if we give them a lap our, to our parents, we won't be able to give back the greatest gift that they gave us. That's uh, the gift of life. But that we can give it to the next generations when uh, we have our own children. So that's, in a way, uh, giving what we receive. But we don't give back to them in that, in that sense. Okay, so our relationships and our experiences of guilt and innocence begin with giving and taking. So in a way, all our relationships are related to that, to giving and taking. Okay, so we need a um, balance on that. So sometimes we feel entitled when we give, and we feel obligated when we take. So the giver and the taker know peace only when both have uh, given and taken equally. So that's, that's the way we want to, to live our, our relationships, no? In an uh, equal way so we don't feel guilt or innocent in a way of saying so when we receive something from someone, uh, Helen Kellinger says that we lose our innocence and our independence. So when we take, we feel indebted and beholden to the giver. And when we feel this obligation as discomfort and pressure, and then we try to overcome it or uh, by giving something back. But we can't truly really take anything without feeling the need to give and sometimes taking is a form of, uh, of guilt, in a way of saying, you know. And, and this is, uh, it takes time to assimilate this, but it's, in a way, if we can, if we see that, it's, it's that way. You know, we, all, we are always giving or taking. So we need to, to uh, keep that balance in our, in our relationships. Okay, any, any questions so far? Okay.
Okay, so um, the important, some of the important, um, a ver, let me see if there's some question coming here. What if there's no balance? Well, if there's no balance, uh, we need to look for it. Like, what, what do you mean, what, uh, what if there's no balance? What happens when there's no balance? If we have it, if we have a, um, if we have, uh, if we don't have balance, sometimes that doesn't make us feel like okay or with the, the energy of love. So we need, it's not that we need to look for that balance, but those relationships are really important. The relationship uh, with the ones that gave us life, you know, and in a way we can heal also those relationships. Uh, because sometimes we see, and, and I've seen patients that, uh, that the relationship with the mother or the father have been really difficult, tough, and, and they uh, uh, relate them as toxic uh, persons in their lives, and that could be true. But uh, that doesn't mean when we heal that relationship, that doesn't mean that we're going physically to them. Sometimes we need to to, to have that distance, that distance, but uh, without the, with, the, with the distance also sometimes we can heal the relationship and sometimes they have passed and also we can heal those relationships and there are some scripts that uh, Helen has, Hellinger has done and there are like rituals that we do in a way of saying so we sometimes if it's the need we give a script for the patient and the patient read that script uh, for the mother, or for, it's different for the mother or for the father, and that helps with the energy that you have with your mother, and it's the perception that we have of, of them, of mother or father. Okay, there's any, uh, let me see, there's other question here. Okay, so also there's um, some other questions that sometimes like, we have matured and we have forgiven like people that has done some harm to us and it's best to leave it alone and move forward and not to be on the path. And yeah, sometimes we have done like, uh, I don't know, psychological, emotional work and, and, and we can see that uh, uh, that uh, harm that happened on the past is not is not uh, on the present now. So that doesn't mean that it's going to affect the whole time. Sometimes maybe we already heal that uh, relationship that or or that situation or problem that happened maybe ten years ago, twenty years ago. So sometimes uh, there are some situations that have been healed. Not all, but some, maybe some of us, and that doesn't mean that we need to go back. So if, it depends. You need to feel your body and to know if there's something there left. And maybe you already work with that, and you. And, and, and what happened also with, a, let's say, with, with abuse or things like that, it's that we just need to see what is beyond that. No, not the harm of of the moment maybe, but it's, there's always something beyond that maybe we haven't been able to look at it yet and maybe that's why we, we are uh, in a way continue dealing with uh, some health issues because we haven't dealt with those issues in a, not in a good way because we, we cannot say here good or bad, but maybe there's something, some energy still there in the body that we need to heal. So we Every process is different. We cannot say, no, you know, like uh, you, ha you need to heal the relationship with the mother in this way or you need to do that. So for every person, it's different. And sometimes it's not 
with some people they cannot approach the mother, let's say, like physically, but within but we can send like love from the heart after we do the healing and that will change the relationship most of the time. And also as I've said, uh, we uh, heal the relation sometimes even if our parents are not here in this realm. Okay, another question here. So if you have a partner who's more like a dependent a dependent and are now going through divorce, what can you do when you're trying to do ju what is just only to be met with contempt? So sometimes the relationship with the partner is interesting because sometimes we can say, let's say if uh, it's a female and your relationship is with a male and we say, oh, it's like the same relationship that my parents have, we, we don't know could be that way. Sometimes there are, they say that the relationship that we have with our husband is the same relationship that you had with your mother. So that's why it's very important to heal the relationship with your mother so you can have mature relationships, let's say, or relationships that are good for yourself. So, so we, in a way, won't, won't uh, repeat the story. There's any other questions there? Okay, so there are some um, laws, the orders of love. There's a, a book of healing that is called the the orders of love, and um, so it's always about honoring all the others in the system, and it's crucial to achieve like a systemic balance, a, a balance in the family. Okay, so it's also always a balancing between giving and taking. And um, so sometimes, like uh, uh, Hellinger talks about how lo how love flourishes between partners when they are well matched and ba balancing each other, like hanging scales when both like uh, when both dishes are alternately filled with the different things of equal weight. So, like the scales in their relationship system, it's like. Uh, like we need to see what is more important for us. Sometimes there's like one of, 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 the, of the partners that is more strong than the other one. So sometimes love requires that the other to be equally strong at another time. That doesn't mean that, uh, that we both need to be strong at the same time. Okay, there's like another questions here. Let me see. It says, my brother has acknowledged then later denied our uncle perpetration of me. Now his daughter is having a baby girl and my mother has double vision in the lower third of his eyes. This makes sense to me because of Louise's case. What can I tell? him to do for help. Could, I don't know if he's open to uh, work with constellations, that could be a, a good work. No? Sometimes when we work ourselves, that's another important thing. When we work ourselves in a way the whole system is receiving that energy. So it's good to work with ourselves because in a way that help our system to heal. We heal but also our mother heals and our children heal. You know, sometimes I, I have had parents here that tells me, like, I would like to have my children here or take to work on, on a constellation. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. 
but what I say is when you work, that has an impact on your children too. And another question is here, are you talking about this lifetime only or the many different lifetimes of the soul? And it's, well, the work here is if, of this lifetime, right? But it, it talks about, Hellinger works talks about the, the soul. And someone else is asking me if I have a new business project, can I constellate it? Yes, there are constellators also that, um, that helps you with that. And could be that it can uh, it could help you to develop it in a, not to develop it in a better way could be also because maybe it can help you with a decision that will be what can be helpful like which way, which way to go okay. So you can constellate anything. You can constellate a uh, situation in your family. You can constellate uh, also there are um, some uh, corporations that work with constellations or sometimes also like with the, the employees on the constellation too. Okay. So there are a lot of uh, feeling that we do on, on the work of constellations. That's what, that's what uh, has been my experience, what I have seen. You know? And it's uh, very interesting. And it's very important sometimes also not to, when we do this work, sometimes we get very excited. We want to tell everyone what happened. But it's very important also to keep that um, information for yourself and not because it's a secret, because it's like uh, what Hellinger calls the movement of the spirit. So in a way, your soul, your spirit needs have different time than the time that we have. So it needs time to assimilate, and we, we, if we start to talk about it, in a way we go back to the head instead of continue feeling with your soul. So it's very important to keep it, so in that way the movement of the soul of the spirit can continue. Okay. Also, um, another important issue, sometimes when we talk about like uh, families, the parents or people that get divorced and sometimes it's, uh, let's say that uh, it, uh, the husband or, or the male uh, wants to get uh, married again with another woman and it is uh, very interesting to see it this way that um, we need to honor the ones that were before us. You know, if, this, if there's a man that was married and I'm going to marry to him and he was married before so I need to honor the women that were with him before because now because they were they are not there I, I'm able to to be with him in a way of saying so I just need to honor those relationships you know? so it's very interesting um, like the honoring you no know? and it's very meaningful too and it helps us you no know, with the ego sometimes too because we need to be very humble also to to accept the, what the world has given to us and the relationships that, that we're in too. Okay, I don't know if uh, there's any other question that you have. Okay, so I um, hope that this uh, helped you a little bit, understanding what uh, constellation can be for you, can help you, as you know, to be more at peace, you know, to be tranquil with your, with your soul, and, um, and just to know that there are not uh, any rigid structures when we talk about the orders of love, There's, they are always changing, and they are different from moment to moment. So that's the reason why every family constellation is different, even when the issues in the families are similar. So when we recognize that um, there's an order in a, it's a certain way, then I, I say what I see. So some people who are uh, 
so who are like a, accustomed to to think in terms of true or false or right or wrong sometimes they have the tendency to hear uh, what we can say as a statement about general truth and it is not that way we just need to be careful with that it's only a recognition of the truth that could be glimpsed in a certain moment so it applies only to that moment and in that moment it has its full truth but uh, it's it's the way it is no it sometimes isolates what I've seen from its momentary context and makes a general principle but sometimes we don't, we need to to see that uh, uh, they're always changing these orders of law. Okay, there's um, uh, a last question. How do you honor parents, siblings, when they have been and continue to be disrespect disrespectful and abusive? So, um, it's, um, I think it'll be good for you to have the experience. It's, it's difficult sometimes to understand, and maybe you can read a little bit about, like, the orders of love or how to, to honor, not to honor the parents. It's uh, a very, that the, as, as I say before, you don't need to be there for them in a way of, uh, you, it, it's okay to set boundaries, no? But honoring parents takes a lot. Uh, it maybe sometimes takes time for us to assimilate that idea, but uh, maybe you can uh, write to us here at, at Sanovi, so I can give you different uh, bibliography that you uh, can can read and can be helpful for that, like in uh, in that respect of honoring the parents, because that will give us a lot of peace. And as I said before, that doesn't mean that maybe we're not able to go there and to be with there physically, but the parents um, that gave us life um, are the ones that we're going to honor, and not we're not judging. We, we need to deal a lot, a lot with also with the judgment that we do. That doesn't mean that they are right or wrong or that you are, but that could be helpful. Um, and uh, you can write here to us, like uh, the mail that I have here is loretta.bravo at sanovit.com, so we can uh, give you some biography so you can understand this uh, a little bit better. Does constellation work start with gene genealogy work? I'm not aware of many of my relatives. Yes, but it, it, it sometimes when you do your constellations could be that uh, they ask you for genealogy work, but that's more like a deep work. But little by little you start to have more information, no? And and it doesn't matter if you don't have if you don't have many, but little by little in a way it, it comes. Okay, another quest, another thing here is, and the last one that I'm going to um, ask here is how, how or what should I do in relation to a sibling that I learned died before birth, before I was born, and no one else in the family knows about. Only I know, and both parents are gone now. So with this, um, it's important to give a, a place to that child. Maybe your parents did without telling you, but we don't know that. But it's okay maybe to put a candle for that brother and, and maybe let's say that you're the third one and he was before you, so maybe you're the fourth one instead of the third one, counting that, that uh, soul that uh, wasn't able to, to be here. So that, in that way, that soul can have a place. You can help that, that uh, that soul to have a place. Maybe your parents did, but you don't know. So for you, it will be okay to do that, no? And that will help, like, because if he is before you, let's say, and you're the third one, so he is the second one, and you're the third one. So you, it just needs a place on the, on the family system, on the soul of the whole family, in a way of saying. Okay, so thank you very much, and I hope uh, that we can talk about another 
topic, another topic next time. And thank you very much for hearing us here at Sanobi. Good evening.